I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know how to be a coach. I didn't know how to make money. And so what I realized straight out of the gate was I needed extra support. Now, the only issue was that I was $30,000 in credit card debt and $90,000 in student loan debt. And so investing in a high level coach felt very much out of the question. Yeah! What's up, everybody? Your life alchemist, your dragon. Welcome to Alchemize Life. I'm your host, Justin David Carl. This is a show where I seek out and share expertise, wisdom, and thought leadership in all domains with the mission of empowering and inspiring you to proactively design and truly live a life worth living. We're all in this together. And when we do the work together, we go so much farther, so much faster, and have so much more fun. Without further ado, let's dig into this episode and alchemize life. Emily Williams, welcome to the show. So good to have you here. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm super pumped. Awesome. So Emily Williams, for those who are new to her work, is a success coach, a best-selling author, a podcaster, and founder of I Heart My Life. And recently, I had the good fortune to connect with a mutual friend of ours, Cody Berman, and he had interviewed you for his podcast. And in preparation for his podcast, I listened to your episode on his show And having recently kicked off my own coaching business, I was like, oh, this is a perfect episode to listen to. This is all about, you know, someone who's super successful, like seven figure coach. And I listened to it and I I immediately fell in love with your your message, your mission, uh, your work and went and bought your book, started reading that. And I'm about 60 percent through And I just feel a massive amount of affinity with how passionate you are about designing a life worth living, about mindset, and so many other mutual areas that we just are really fascinated with. And I just want to kick off with your origin story. You weren't always this successful. You weren't always this happy. So take us back. Yeah, thank you so much for setting the scene. So for me, I always knew I wanted to do something big, but I wasn't sure what that thing actually was. So I graduated with a degree in psychology, and I thought my next step was to go and get a master's at Northwestern. I was literally driving there. So I'm from from Ohio. I was driving to Chicago. And I got this feeling in the pit of my stomach, like letting me know that it wasn't the next step for me. And that was a crazy sort of moment where I had to just decide to follow my heart. And it wasn't realistic. There was no reason for it. I had planned out the whole thing, right? I planned to go to grad school. But in that moment, I turned the car around and went back to Ohio. And I entered into a full-blown quarter-life crisis where I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Felt like a failure, ended up working at Starbucks for a while, had a few other odd jobs, and ultimately had to do a lot of soul searching to figure out what I was meant to do. To compress this story, basically what happened next is I ended up in London, England, because I had this feeling like I was meant to live in England, and feeling I'm sure will be a big theme throughout our conversation today. So I followed that sort of inkling, moved to England in 2010, and thought that I would be you know, shifting my quarter life crisis, thought I would figure it all out. But again, felt lost, ended up working as a nanny, ended up going to grad school to get a degree in nonfiction writing because I knew I always wanted to be a writer, but that was the extent of my clarity at the time. And then around 2013, my friend sent me a link to Marie Forleo's website, and she's a coach who many of us know and admire. And I just had this feeling as soon as I opened up her website that that was it, that this was the thing I was meant to do. It just like, it, you know, one of those aha moments, I had all the emotions. And so I started to tune into, okay, well, if I want to be a coach, if I want to start a business like this, who do I want to work with? And what I realized is that throughout that five year period in my quarter life crisis, I was really trying to figure out how to love my life, figure out how to be happy, how to fall in love with myself, how to create joy. I even at one point saw a coach that worked in this place called the Happiness Center in London, and she was a happiness coach. 
And so I realized I wanted to help other women find their purpose and love their life. And so the idea for I Heart My Life came to be. And that was 2013. And I launched the brand in 2014, got my first client the summer of 2014, made $442. And that was essentially the start of my my coaching business. So quick question, just to, I know we're supercharging through your story, which uh, there's plenty of interviews people can listen to, to get a more in-depth one. What was the time frame between kind of like realizing you didn't want to go to Northwestern for grad school then actually launching your coaching uh, business in 2014. How many years was that? Six years. Six years. Okay. So the reason I want to draw that out is a lot of times ultra successful people like yourself seem like they figured it out in like, you know, maybe a few weeks or a couple months, but like it literally took you six years of searching, trying a bunch of different things, you know, maybe even like pounding your head against the wall at times and feeling super lost. I'm curious during that time, those six years, were there any particular things, people, resources, workshops, et cetera, that, really, you know, obviously, and I always mess up her last name, but Marie uh, Forleo. Marie Forleo. Yeah. Marie uh, (laughs) Forleo. I'm just gonna leave it there. Marie. (laughs) Yeah. Obviously, that was a huge trigger. But what were some of the other things that kind of helped you start to find yourself? Yeah, great question. So what I realized was I was so focused on what wasn't working, that I was basically getting more of that. And so when I started working with my own coach at the Happiness Center, and I started to read some personal development books and even um, started to practice the law of attraction, because I got really into the book, The Secret, I realized that, you know, whatever we focus on, we get more of. And so if you're completely down in the dumps, always telling yourself on a regular basis, I'm so lost, I can't figure it out, I don't know what my purpose is, which was basically my narrative at the time, then you're going to stay in that place and continue to be stuck. So one of the things that really helped me shift that was actually focusing on the things that were working and the things that I was grateful for. So it sounds really simplistic, but I started to create a, like a gratitude blog. It was on Tumblr, if anyone remembers Tumblr, and just started to list out all the things on a regular basis, on a daily basis that I was grateful for. Things like someone opened the door for me, or I was able to buy my pumpkin spice latte today, or you know something really simple. And then of course, added in big things as they happened. And what that did is it really shifted my mindset to, okay, there are some things that are working. There is positive in my life. There is, you know, joy. Things are going right. I am headed in the right direction. And when you start to make that your narrative, then your reality starts to reflect that. And, you know, we all can have tunnel vision at the time where we're just looking at what's going wrong. When you open up your eyes and you start to see that things are headed in the right direction, you will see and notice more opportunities. You will be more aware to things that are coming your way that pique that curiosity, you know, like that website that was sent to me or, you know, any other, a business opportunity or something, a client. But if we're just like so down in the, in the dumps, number one, we aren't even going to attract those opportunities because we're not an energetic match. And number two, we might not even be aware of them because we're so fixated on the fact that things aren't working according to us. Yeah. Uh, Where you place your focus on totally expands. Like (laughs) it's, it's wild. And um, I'm curious, what are some ways that people can shift their focus? Cause it is so easy to get caught up in the what's not working. Right. And you mentioned gratitude and I want to, you know, use myself as a, you know, a case example. I am ultra positive, high energy for the first like 40 to 70 percent of the day, depending on kind of like how much sleep I got. But then towards the end of the day, when I'm just like out of steam, because I, I, I tend to like go you know, really hard throughout the day on everything from like exercise and business endeavors. And I just have a ton of outpouring of energy. And then then I just feel like I'm spent by the end of the day. And even I like as positive as I am, you know, kind of towards the end of the part of the day, like the anxiety and the fear starts to creep in. And, you know, usually my solution to that is to just go to bed. But I'm curious if you have any tips on, you know, how I could cultivate more positive mindset and positive vibe 
during that kind of like last couple hours of the day. I've tried to do the, you know, the night journaling and the gratitude journaling at the end, but I'm just like, I don't have the energy anymore. So I'm just curious if you have any thoughts there. Yeah, great question. So, I mean, first of all, I can introduce you to my husband, who's a certified high performance coach. I'm sure he could answer that on this podcast from a completely different angle when it comes to energy. But in terms of mindset, I mean, number one, I never make myself wrong for what's coming up for me. Especially when you're starting something new like a coaching business, there's bound to be a lot of emotional highs and lows. And so just accepting the fact that that's your current state and knowing that it's not the truth. So the fears, the anxieties, like that's not your real truth. That's just what's coming up because you're feeling tired and you're feeling vulnerable or whatever, you know, the emotion is. And so I think so often when people haven't done mindset work, they believe everything their mind is telling them. And that's one of the things that I learned early on that this is just programming. It's not the truth. And the truth is what is in my heart and what I'm believing about what I'm capable of, you know, what my mission is. And so just recognizing that. And so observing those thoughts, those negative thoughts, but then letting them go. And then the other thing that's really helped me is not trying to go from like exhaustion all the way up to joy, which is very high on the frequency. Joy is very high on the energetic frequency. Think about like stair stepping up, right? So right now, if you're stressed or anxious or worried, like what is one level up that you could achieve? Maybe it's just laying down for a bit and you like start to feel a bit more calm. Maybe it's like a simple running through what you're grateful for in your mind from the day right? And you'll start to shift into gratitude. So it's not like trying to go from one extreme to another, but how can we kind of step up the energetic frequency ladder? I love that. Yeah. Instead of trying to go zero to a hundred, just like maybe go from like zero to 10 or 20. One thing that I've found uh, that does work really well for me is listening to empowering podcasts because when I'm tired, it's hard for me to do a lot of like active work, but I can kind of do passive like learning and be like filled up. And this is, you know, one of the things that you talk about in your book is saturating your mind and your spirit and your heart with content that is actually moving you towards your goals, towards the person that you want to become. And so oftentimes for me, like I'll just put on podcasts, like when I'm making dinner, my wife and I will just like play it out loud if we don't have the energy to uh, engage with each other. You know, lots of times we'll, we'll take the time to talk about our day, talk about, you know, what we're working on, what's coming up for us. But sometimes both of us are too tired and we'll just like, let's just listen to like an awesome podcast together. So she listened to uh, some of your podcast interview with Cody uh, with me and she's like, oh, I like her. So that's awesome. Well, and I also want to say that sometimes, you know, especially in the American culture, we're all about hustle. And so I think it's really amazing that you also are just observing yourself being tired and allowing yourself to go and rest. Because how often are we trying to push through and we make ourselves wrong for how we're feeling? And it's really just your body saying like, you now is not the time to work. Like now is the time to rest. And we know as busy entrepreneurs that there's a time for work. But, you know, if we look at all the people who are amazing with athletes and do all the research that we now know, rest is just as important as those times where we're moving full speed ahead. Yeah, I think even more so both as you get older and then as you become more successful, the kind of rejuvenation recovery becomes as important, maybe even more important than the execution and the high performance. Because if you don't do the rejuvenation and if you don't do the recovery, then you burn out, you crash, you get sick, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Awesome. So you've worked with, it seems like a ton of people. So one of the questions that I had is like, which coaches have you personally worked with? Because, you know, you mentioned uh, Brendan Bouchard and Daniel Laporte and, you know, a lot of people that I'm just like a huge fan of. You know, I've been a lifelong fan of Tony Robbins. I've gone to some of his workshops. I read his book when I was like, you know, probably like 13 or 14. And that kind of like got me started on the personal development uh, train uh, at a super Super young age, but I'm curious some of the people that you've worked with over the years. Yeah, Brendan Burchard has been amazing to work with. Gina V, who's a big coach in the online space. Marie Forleo, I was in her B-School program at the very beginning, which was awesome. David Nagel is someone I've worked with. Robin Sharma. Goodness, Danielle has become like a friend. I, I happened to uh, 
do something really special for her when she had a book launch. And so we kind of bonded over that and have stayed in touch. And she's been on my podcast and stuff. Yeah, those are the main people. Uh, But yeah, I mean, my husband and I, we realized we've spent over 600 grand on personal development in the last eight years. That was my next question. Like how much (laughs) have you spent on coaches and masterminds? (laughs) Help me and help the audience understand how to make that kind of investment in oneself. Like, how do you do it? Why is it important? Uh, How do you think about it? So going back to my story, uh, I told you that in July 2014, I made $442. I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know how to be a coach. I didn't know how to make money. And so what I realized straight out of the gate was I needed extra support. Now, the only issue was that I was $30,000 in credit card debt and $90,000 in student loan debt. And so investing in a high level coach felt very much out of the question. Um, But my husband, he always believed in me and was incredible and super supportive. And although he was only making like 36 grand a year, he lent me his credit card to sign up for a group program that would help me launch my coaching business. And it was about 7,500, I think. And the thing we had, we had a bunch of clarity calls and, and, you know, calls with this coach. And ultimately I decided that I would be more likely to make money if I had support versus trying to do it on my own. And I kept thinking about, you know, this is $7,500, which feels like a lot right now, but I know I want to reach six figures and well beyond that. And so if this person can help me get started and set up the foundation for literally the rest of my career, how could I possibly say no? And it's the same thing, you know, when people invest in university, which can be up to, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, think about lawyers and doctors and all the people that we admire, they have programs that set themselves up for an incredible career. But why as business owners, do we think that we're going to try and do it ourselves? Like, is that really the smart path to take and the fast track to everything that you want in your life and business? So for me, I made that shift and I started to make decisions based on where I want it to be, not from where I currently was. Right now, in that moment, you know, I felt like I was broke in debt. And that's what it kind of said. That's what it said when I logged into my bank account. But I knew I wanted to be wealthy and abundant and successful. And a successful person would choose to get support. And so I just kept that mindset every stage of the game. And eventually, within a few months, I was making a lot more money in my business. I was able to quit my job. And then they invited me to join the next level program, which was 30 grand. So again, I said yes. Then literally a few months later, I hit six figures in my business and they invited me to join a program that was $120,000, literally like the amount of money I had just made. And so that was a little bit of a, a scary one. But again, I knew if I had been able to create what I created with something that it was a program with 200 people, then if I got myself into a program with six people, how much more support would I have? How much faster would I go? And so I just really trusted that I would make the money back. And I had done a lot of money, money mindset work on myself at that point to know that there's always money for our desires. And so I just led with that belief in myself, my, the belief in abundance and invested. And that month in particular, when I invested, it was my top month ever at the time. Um, and I made $83,000 because there was like a purpose, you know, for the money, And I just kept kind of keeping that mindset throughout the last, throughout the next, you know, seven or eight years. Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. Today's show is brought to you by Veg Nutrition, Live Better. So I'm actually a veg elite athlete. And before I joined the team, I spent months doing my due diligence to make sure that the company was vision, mission, and value aligned with me, my values, my mission, my vision, and my lifestyle. I got to know the owners super well. I even got to know the person who formulates all the products, and they passed with flying colors. So I couldn't be more excited to represent a company that I feel so aligned with. And I want to tell you about two of my favorite products. The first is the Veg Pre-Workout. So when I first went vegan or mostly vegan, the last thing for me to go fully vegan was finding a vegan pre-workout that gave me the focus 
the energy and the power that I was looking for. And I can tell you, this is the best pre-workout that I've ever had. It gives me incredible focus and energy. And what's probably the best is it leaves me with no crash after I take it, which is great. And the flavors are so freaking good. There's literally peach mango and a Patriot pop that tastes like, you know, the firecracker popsicles, cherry lemon lime flavor. They're literally so good that I can dry scoop them. And they just released a watermelon flavor for just in time for summer. And it's incredible. So that's the first product. The second product is arguably also my favorite, and that's the plant protein. Comes in three incredible flavors, chocolate peanut butter, vanilla ice cream, and cold brew coffee. Yep, you heard me. Cold brew coffee flavor. It tastes incredible, all three flavors. 25 grams of protein, fully organic, incredible ingredients, heavy metal tested, and it is my go-to post-workout. Make sure that I'm recovering and refueling and giving my muscles the protein that they need to rebuild for that next workout. So go to vegnutrition.com slash dragon and try their full line of supplements and you'll get 15% off. Or you can just use dragon at checkout and you'll get 15% off. So that's vegnutrition.com slash dragon to get 15% off. Veg Nutrition, live better. Yeah, it's something I wish I had figured out sooner. Really in any area of your life that you want to take to the next level, getting a coach, joining a mastermind, getting mentors is probably the fastest way to up-level yourself. You know, in my own personal journey, I uh, I struggled with my fitness really all my life, kind of wanting to have like this awesome physique that I always like dreamed of as a kid. And it wasn't until I started like working with a fitness coach in my, you know, close to my mid-30s that I finally got the body that I've been trying to get for so long. And then, you know, I realized like, okay, like now I want to take care of my money. So I created like a mastermind and basically surrounded myself with a bunch of millionaires and multimillionaires. And, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, long until I got to the next levels, you know, financially that I wanted to be at because I actually started to put myself around those people, you know, and working with various coaches and also different types of therapy you know, to work on the areas of my life that are important to me, whether that's my relationship or even um, getting this podcast launched, I had to work with the EFT practitioner to like unblock myself because I'd been wanting to start a podcast for no joke, like eight years. And it was like, okay, I have to do something different this year, or it's going to be another eight years before I actually launch my podcast. So if you were to like go back to like a younger version of me, like I'm 25, not, you know, 34, <laughs> like, is there like, you know, as I've launched my own coaching business, you know, around money and fitness, you know, I'm talking to people who are in their 20s and they just can't fathom. They're trying to figure out how to do it themselves. And I was that same person. I was like, no, I'm going to figure it out myself. And I'm just curious, like, how do you get through to somebody like that? Is it even possible? Yeah, so I definitely think it's possible. I'll answer that in two different ways. When I first started my business, I had this period of 54 no's in a row. So 54 people said no to me week after week after week. And obviously I was getting a little bit frustrated. And so I was talking to one of my coaches about what I was essentially doing wrong. And what I realized is that on the sales calls, I wasn't willing to go deep with those clients. So basically they would say to me, oh yeah, I'd love to work with you. But then the next breath they would say, but I don't have the money or I don't have the time or they'd make up some sort of an excuse. And I would just kind of end the call then and there and get off the phone and thank them and just wish them well. 
But what I started to do was actually go deeper. And if someone says they want to make a change and yet they're not taking action or willing to get support, then we know something else is going on beneath the surface. So I would get more curious on my calls and just say, you know, well, let's talk about how you can find the money. Let's talk about how you can make the time. Would you like to have a conversation like that? Would you like to look at your bank account right here and now together? And they always said yes, because they actually do want support. It's just something else holding them back. And then we would be able to uncover, okay, well, what is it really that's stopping you? Is it you have a fear of success, like you're going to create success and you won't have any time for your friends and family? Is it a fear of what people will think? Is it a fear of not being able to make the money back? Is it a self-worth thing? And so there were other things kind of running the show, so to speak, that we needed to identify so that we could get to the root cause of why they weren't actually moving forward and why they didn't want to get support. Some people didn't feel deserving of support. They didn't feel deserving of spending the money on themselves. They grew up with a block around that and were taught that, you know, you should just be able to figure it out yourself, you know, don't invest in things like that. And so uncovering what is actually stopping people from saying yes and getting the support is really important. Yeah. I think everything that you said is is so true and really getting to the to the root and the core with people because these are areas that even for my myself like we're afraid to look that deep within ourselves but if we have somebody who's willing to go there with us maybe we can start to see what those things are and and for me with the podcast i realized i had a deep-seated subconscious fear of being seen especially by my family which is crazy like and, and being seen as you know very successful because a podcast you get super deep you have these intimate conversations that you know you wouldn't like do a social media post about but like you'll have a conversation with somebody else and so i you know, through my work with the EFT practitioner realized that like I had to remove that subconscious block of, of, you know, uh, my fear of being seen as like happy and successful by my own family, which when I say it out loud now is crazy. Like what parents wouldn't want their child to be ultra happy and successful, but we don't realize these things are there until somebody goes there with us, whether that's a coach or, you know, EFT practitioner or, you know, a therapist or whatever. It's amazing what you can do when you're not afraid to do it with somebody else. So, yeah. And like, it's amazing that you recognize that in yourself and you ask for support. And the other thing I would say that, which is the second part of your question that I was going to answer is that sometimes people just aren't ready. They're not ready to see it. They don't want it bad enough. And I know that might sound kind of harsh, but if you really want something, you'll do what it takes to make it happen. And so, you know, in the beginning, I think when you're building a business, you're kind of like grabby with clients. You know, you just want everyone to sign up. But what I've realized is, you know, people have to meet me halfway, more than halfway, really. Like I can't go in and hold their hand every step of the way. And so I'd rather, you know, just work with the people who are all in and they've come to the realization that now is the time to make a change versus like dragging someone along who isn't yet ready to transform. Yeah. One of the things that you touched upon that I I want to draw out a little bit more is that that worthiness, like I'm not worthy to invest that kind of money in myself. And I think, you know, I have to figure it out on my own. I think that's a part of our society is like you have to figure everything out on your own. It's just like built into American society and probably a lot of societies. And, you know, how do you think about cultivating worthiness? Hmm. No one's ever asked me that before. So I think it starts with belief. And I know that you're reading the book right now and there's a big chapter on belief. And I've always, I've had a um, pretty strong belief that I'm meant for something big and that I'm worthy of the life that I want. But I know that not a lot of people are essentially brought up in that way. And so I do think I'm a little bit different in that my family always taught me that I could have whatever I want. I could have support. I could invest in things. My, you know, I went to an incredible university. I invested in that. But I think if you don't have that innately, you need to look at like, what are the core beliefs that are there for you? Is it that someone told you you weren't worthy? Is it Your parents made you feel like you weren't worthy. And I don't think you need to stay there and like do an extensive deep dive on the limiting beliefs, but at least be aware of them so you know that they're not the truth. It's most likely someone else's story, or even maybe it was a belief passed down from generation to generation. 
but you don't have to adopt that as your truth any longer. And then you literally start to replace, you know, some of those limiting beliefs. So if you don't feel worthy, we'll just take the getting help example. If you don't feel worthy of getting help, I'm not saying you need to go and spend six figures on a coach, but start small. Like, do you want help around the house? Okay, great. Hire someone to clean your house once a month and just see how it feels. You don't even ha- you don't even have to commit to it, you know, for a long time. Or maybe you want to buy something that you wouldn't normally buy for yourself. Maybe it was it's flowers and normally you think that's really f- frivolous. Well, buy yourself a bouquet of flowers just once and see how it feels. Maybe you have a belief that first class is a waste of money. Okay, well, upgrade one time and see how it feels, right? You'll never go back, by the way. But (laughs) just start with those little steps that are in alignment with your current desires that your mind automatically says, oh, no, you can't have. Just start with the little ones, and then you'll build trust with yourself, and it'll be easier to invest at a greater level. Yeah. So similar to what you're saying before, instead of trying to go from like zero to 100 self-worth and worthiness, try going from zero to 10 or zero to 20 and scale your way up to a greater sense of worthiness. Would you say that that is kind of what you're getting at? Exactly. Awesome. Well, that's cool. I have to say or admit that, you know, reading your book and I've been listening to an audio uh, book because then I can like run around and do things and yeah, yeah. I, I love to move. And the fact that you acknowledge and write about and talk about feeling and knowing that you were meant for something big was like such a breath of relief for me because I've always felt the same way, but like a shame to even admit it to like anyone other than like maybe my wife. And I'm curious, like how, (laughs) how did you take ownership of that? Yeah, I love that question. Well, I'm curious to know. So what is the shame for you? Like, why were you nervous about admitting it? Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. This show is brought to you by Feel Free from Botanic Tonics. This product is unlike anything I've ever had before. No joke. It's made with kava root and other ancient plants, and just half a shot gives me this incredible sense of focused flow and productivity. And I love to take just half a shot right before I work out. I take it with my pre-workout and it takes my workouts to the next level. It is seriously unlike anything I've ever had. It's also an incredible productivity tool for any big work projects that you have or long periods of time where you just need to be super focused in flow state and get a lot of shit done. So if you want to give this a shot, you can go to botanictonics.com and use code DRAGON at checkout to get 40% off your first order. No joke, 40% off with code DRAGON. That's feel free from botanictonics.com, code DRAGON. Feel free, feel good. I think because it seems like so like self-entitled and grandiose and like, you know, it's probably related to that some conscious fear of like, you know, being afraid of uh, truly being seen as successful and happy. And I'm sure there's some like interrelated like root work, you know, that yeah. I've been d- doing a lot of work on like, you know, so I've done that work. So I'm literally admitting it here on this podcast that I too feel yeah. like that I've always been meant for something big and I'm stepping into that, but I'm like scared. I'm like already like, oh, what are people going to think on the podcast? Like, oh, Dragon thinks he's so high and mighty. And like, I start to like, you know, doubt myself and like, why did I even admit that? That's like the, uh, you know, I call kind of like my dark side smog because like my nickname's Dragon and like the evil dragon is smog. He's the one who comes out at night and tells me all the bad stuff that's I need to be worrying about. So I'm just curious, like, how did you start to really take ownership of that? Because, you know, when you were uh, going through those six years of trying to figure it all out, like, were you openly, you know, telling people that like you felt like you're meant for something big? Like, were you taking a stance online? Like, how did you get to this level of just conviction and ownership of of yourself? 
Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't out there telling everyone, but I think the fact that I moved from Ohio to London, you know, even though I'm in a family where no one has ever left Ohio, like that was a clear indication that I felt like I was meant for a different sort of a life. And then when I was in relationships, I would talk to the people I was dating about my dreams and, you know, feeling like I was meant for something big. But I feel like your example is perfect because when I got into the coaching space, I didn't know how honest to be about how I felt about myself and my vision. And then I realized, you know, the people who I was worried about judging me, just like you said, they weren't even my ideal client. Like, I don't, I'm not here to serve the person who doesn't have big dreams. Mm. And so what I realized was it was actually my duty to share this information because the person who I was here to serve would resonate with that message, just like you. And so when I started sharing how much money I was making, my vision for my company, you know, wanting to write a book, wanting to launch a podcast, all the things I shared that with confidence because not at first, but I got, I started to share it with more confidence when I saw, okay, this is resonating with my ideal clients. This is resonating with the people who I'm meant to inspire. And it's my duty to keep sharing and to get out of my own way and move past the insecurity and the fear. Yeah. You hit on something that I know, but I'm finally able to understand it in this context of, you know, actually starting to take ownership of, of truly feeling like I've meant for something big. Confidence is built through experience. So you said at first you weren't confident talking about it, but the more you talked about it, the more confident you became talking about it. And you know this, like, cause you've done sales for your own coaching program. Like the more you sell your coaching program or talk about, you know, your program or any business or product, the more confident you get because you just, you practice, you work those muscles out, you develop that strength that, you know, before you kind of had like weak, you know, worthiness muscles. And then like, as you continued to like put in the reps, your worthiness strength just like, you know, grew tremendously. So I think you're helping me figure it out. I just need to, to, (laughs) I need to put in the reps of, of owning that. So, and you're totally right. I think, you know, similar to you, I want to work with people, you know, my coaching program is about fitness and financial success. And so I want to work with people who believe and know that they are capable of deep down of like having the body of their dreams and achieving the financial success of their dreams, whatever that means for them. And it's different for everybody. Some people want to be a millionaire. Some people want to be a billionaire. Some people want abs. Some people want to, you know, just look great in a bikini and there's no right or wrong answer. It's like, but knowing that like, that's something you want. And you talk about this desire, like if this desire is in you. And I think in your book, you kind of mentioned if it's in you, it's like, it's kind of like the seed of something that could bloom if you choose to water it, but because there is a seed there, like it's real. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like feeding your desire and helping those grow and like uh, actually come in alive in your life? Yeah. So desire is really what I base my life on. And so what's really helped me throughout, you know, the last eight years in building my business is recognizing if I have a desire, then that is meant for me and it's possible. You know, so often we have these inklings or, you know, we want something or we believe something is possible for us. But then in the next moment, we're like, oh, no, well, I can't do it or I'm not capable or I don't have the money. And so what I've trained my mind to believe is the moment I have a desire in that same moment, I also know that it's meant for me and possible. So, for example, if you want to, you know, if someone's listening and they want to start a coaching business, they might have people in their life saying, oh, no, you can't do it. It's not possible. But, you know, if you have the desire, you can automatically also believe that it's possible for you. So it's like this this almost reflex where if I have a desire, I know it's possible, period. I don't even have to question it because I believe our desires are dropped in. They're like DNA. And when you operate with that belief in life, then the fear, the doubt, the insecurity, it can't come in and permeate because you know your desires are essentially truth. Now, I'm not saying that you go and make every single desire happen the second. Sometimes it's a big picture desire. Sometimes it's a desire for five years from now. Whatever it may be, you know, the timeline timeline can be decided by you and it can change if need be. But I think like I really believe that by me following my heart and my desires, that's how I get to my most fully expressed life. I love that. You just hit the next point that I really want to cover 
which is like actually developing that intuition, that inner knowing and listening to that like inner pull that you talk about in your book and, you know, all of your work. Like, how do you start to cultivate all of that? Yeah. So for some people, desires are at the forefront of their mind. They know what they want. And for others, it's a little bit harder. So I know for me, one of the things that really helped was just paying attention to my emotions. So for example, if I saw, when I saw Marie Forleo's website, that evoked a lot of emotion in me. And so I paid attention to, okay, what aspects of this are actually calling me? I love that she worked with women. I love that she was super fashionable. I love that she had this really positive message. She had her podcast, her TV show, all the things. And that really spoke to me. I also listened to my jealousy, like I was super jealous of her. (laughs) And so, you know, both sides of the spectrum are really telling emotions. And so if you're not clear on your desires, literally just pay attention to your emotions for a few days or a week or even a month. And I guarantee that that will help point you in the right direction of what is calling you. And then give yourself the time to even tune into your intuition, because I think so often we're afraid of feeling and we're afraid of tuning into our intuition. And so we turn on the TV or we call a friend. I remember a few, maybe it was last year. I think it came out. I was listening to the, or watching the Adele interview with Oprah. And she was talking about like her transformation after her divorce and her weight loss. And one of the main things that she did was she just didn't distract herself. She allowed herself to be with her feelings and what was coming up for her. Obviously she had things to to work through, but I think that's, you know, so often our pattern where we distract ourselves. So we can't even hear our intuition and what's guiding us. Yeah. (laughs) I'm guilty of that too. You know, just, just like on the weekend, like all, you know, distract myself with like books or shows or something instead of, you know, actually listening to that intuition or that inner pull that like you have these other projects that you really want to work on. Like, you could do a few minutes. And the funny thing I've found for myself is if I don't make it hard, I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on it for five minutes. Five minutes will turn into like an hour or three. If I just let myself go there instead of like distracting myself. And sometimes I only do five minutes, but then it's like, hey, at least I did something to kind of move the ball forward in that particular area or on that particular goal. And I think I'm really going to keep stealing this whole like zero to a hundred, like scaling up lesson because it's like, you're not going to like accomplish a goal in like one day or one weekend. But like, instead of trying to go from zero to a hundred again, like maybe you just go from like zero to five or zero to 10 and just put a little bit of work on because that all like is cumulative over time. And eventually, you know, your uh like emily williams and like hyper successful <laughs> living your big life so that's amazing um yeah, and i think like you have to develop trust as well within yourself i know for me and i'm just speaking to you because i know you're building a new business where of course the temptation is to do things like everyone else but then you might hear you in, your intuition say you know what but i don't want to launch that program or it doesn't feel aligned for me to launch that course and so for a lot of for many years i fell into the trap of doing things because other people told me they would work but i could tell you know within my gut that my intuition was saying like no this isn't for us or this isn't the direction for the company but it took a long time for me to trust that little voice and that intuition and to move past the fear of, you know, doing things wrong or not doing it the way, doing it the way I was supposed to do it, or the fear of not making enough money. It took me time to move past that and navigate it and just trust my intuition. Was there any steps or tools or resources that you used to amplify that inner voice? So you were listening to it more? I think it's finding the right community and mentors who will help you voice what it is that you're feeling and basically provide you with the support to say, you know what, you can do it differently and it can still work. So that was one thing. And then just believing in an abundant universe and just trusting like there isn't one way to do things. And the most successful way for me is actually to continue to trust myself and to do it my way. And just believing that I'm meant for this, I'm meant for big things. And so even if it doesn't work out at first, even if there are challenges, I'm still gonna press on and be able to figure this out. And so there really isn't anything to fear. 
Hey there, just a few words about the incredible show sponsors for today's episode, and then we'll dig right back in. Today's show is brought to you by Fit Rich Vegan. If you're ready to get in the best shape of your life, double your income, and 10x your savings investments, then this is the coaching program for you. But wait a minute, Dragon. Isn't this your coaching program? Heck yeah, it is. I spent the last eight years mastering my fitness and my finances, and I've built an incredible coaching program with an incredible team to help you get the body of your dreams and finally achieve that level of financial success that you've been seeking. So if you want to find out if you're a good fit for the program, go to fitrichvegan.com and book your free consultation today. Or you can just DM me on Instagram with the words fitrichvegan, and we can chat about if it's going to be a good fit for you. I'm committed to empowering people to actually achieve their fitness and financial goals. I spent the last 20 years trying to figure this out on my own. And what I realized is the key to doing it is not doing it alone. You have to have coaches, you have to have mentors, and you have to be a part of masterminds. And that's exactly what Fitch Rich Vegan has. It has coaches, mentors, and it is a mastermind. So again, if you're ready to book your free consultation today, go to fitrichvegan.com or drop me a DM on Instagram. Yeah, that's so true. And as long as we keep taking yeah. action, like sometimes we'll take steps back, but then it helps us realize like, hey, that didn't work for me. Or like, you know, I thought I wanted to do it this way. And I actually realized that that wasn't the way I wanted to do it. But now I do know the way that I want exactly. to do it because I actually took action. Let's talk about judgment. Because in your book, you make this incredible delineation about judgment and you say like what you judge you block can you talk a little bit more about that yeah so I realized this after working with so many women who said they wanted to be successful and make a lot of money and yet they were judging people who were successful and made a lot of money (laughs) and what I realized was the subconscious is not going to allow you to have the thing that you want if you have negative things associated with it so for example if you're saying oh I want to fly first class and yet when you walk onto a plane you're looking negatively at all the people sitting in the first class seats and thinking, oh, what a waste of money, or why would they be so, you know, um, frivolous with their spending, or I don't need that leg room, or, you know, they look so stuck up, right? Like, if you're judging that, you're not going to get it, because your subconscious does not, you don't want to be in judgment of yourself. And so you're going to stop yourself from reaching that level. Maybe you're judging people who make a ton of money because you think, oh, you know, they're stuck up, they're not relatable, or maybe you even worry and you're judging the amount of time that they spend in their business and you don't want to be super stressed and busy. And so anyway, whatever the thing is, if you find yourself judging or judging, I used to judge people as I was scrolling through Instagram, women who were like really skinny and had big thigh gaps. I was like, how could you possibly be that skinny? Like, I do not understand. And there was so much judgment there. And then I realized I'm never going to have a body like that. I'm not saying that's the goal, but I'm never going to have a body like that if I have so much negative energy and judgment towards that type of body type. And so you really have to think about, you know, do you have clean energy when you think about your desires or is there some judgment or, you know, something else that's blocking you from getting that result? Yeah, hit me so powerfully. I'm so glad you called that out because even, you know, I think we're all guilty of judging stuff. Like we judge what we want. We judge what we fear. We judge what we don't know or are unfamiliar with. And, you know, a lot of those things are things that we do actually want in our life. And like like you said, we're basically like creating like the opposite energy of what we need to like, you know, hold within in order to actually bring that into our life. So, you know, and I think it's also really powerful for if you stop judging others or work consciously and proactively to stop judging others, you start to stop judging yourself so much. And then 
that leads to more self-love and self-acceptance. And then that kind of like, you know, it's this virtuous circle. Then you stop judging others as much. And then you're able to bring more of that into your life. So I know we're we're getting close on time and I want to make sure we have a couple minutes to chat offline before I let you go. So are there any last words of wisdom or big things that you are super excited about and want to share with the audience? So one more thing around the judgment piece, that'll be my answer to the wisdom question. I wrote a blog post. You guys can check it out. It's on emilywilliams.com slash blog. And it's, I basically read this article about Kelly Clarkson's ex-husband requesting over 400 grand a month in spousal support. And I read that article and I immediately judged him. And I was like, what could he possibly need 400 grand a month for? And then I realized I was judging him. And so I decided I was going to write out how I would spend $400,000 a month. And I actually had a purpose for over 500 grand a month. And that immediately squashed my jealousy because I was like, okay, I get it now. Right. And it squashed my judgment. And so if anyone is judging like an amount of money or say somebody's spending what you deem an exorbitant amount on a hotel room, Think about how you would feel in that circumstance. Think about how you would spend the money, whatever it is. Just picture your own scenario and that will really help you shift the judgment. Awesome. Yeah. What are you most excited about? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm most excited about where we're taking the I Heart My Life brand. I feel like it's finally coming full circle and headed in the direction it was born to head in. And uh, we're launching a new membership in September. And we're also launching our I Heart My Life experiences, which are our luxury retreats. We like to say it's where personal development meets your vision board. So if anyone loves to travel and transform, this is for you. (laughs) Sounds so good. Yeah, I yeah. want to make one huge call out. So I Heart My Life, the whole brand is very geared towards women. The book as well, it's written towards a female audience. But I can tell you as a man, it is 100% applicable, at least the book and you know your podcast, as well as the you know, all the blogs, articles you have written. So, you know, if you're a man listening to this and you're like, ah, you know, she only speaks to women. No, she doesn't. Like she (laughs) like her in-person programs may be for women only, but all of her work is super powerful and, you know, is is just as empowering to a man and enlivening and uh, freeing uh, as it is for a woman. So uh, don't be afraid to look into her work if you are from the male side. But yeah, so <laughs> thank you, Emily. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Best place to find you online for the audience if they want to connect with you. Yeah, iheartmylife.com is the main website. I also have emilywilliams.com. And then you can find me on Instagram at iheartmylife or at emilywilliams. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, literally everything can be used as an opportunity to learn, to heal, to grow, and to transform. So whatever is going on in your life, choose to consciously and proactively Harness that energy and use it to alchemize your life to the next level. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend or on your favorite social media and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. As always, you can find me at Justin David Carl on Instagram and all the socials, as well as at alchemizelife.com on the web. Until the next time, sending you lots of energy and plenty of dragon magic.